think about data analytics, um, persons seem to think that they have to be an airline company or a phone company who collects the zillion records from customers' um, transactions. In my particular instance, I have a client that has 30,000 records. Now, it's just the way that their business grows and that's the pace they've grown. But it's equally important to be able to use analytics in, on a small company as well as it, it's able to scale up for, say, a larger company. And I think what's lost in some areas of technology is we, the small person, doesn't feel as if he belongs next to an IBM or next to an AT&T when you're talking about big data. The analyst community has, has struggled to, to, to become a community, to become a, a group of people, a tribe of people, if you like. We, we, we've seen different initiatives. We, we've seen the DAA, which is a success to some degree. I think one of the things about our community, regardless of how disorganized we may be, is that we, when we meet, it's still like meeting old family members. It's still like getting together and talking to, to people that you've met before, even if you haven't met them before, because you have that instant connection of being nerds. And not just nerds, but that particular kind of really weird digital analytics nerd. Yeah, man. Jamaica has been very good. Everybody's been super nice here. Um, the weather's amazing. The beaches are great. And next time, you know, if we have another one of these things, I'd, I'd say come for a week. One of the things that was special and unique for me here was the participation of, of practitioners who are really focused on CRO, of conversion rate optimization. I thought that they brought a unique skill set to the world of data that we usually talk about in terms of um, an analytics conference. It's relatively new, really. I mean, usability has existed for a long time. Uh, but CRO is it's still not highly adopted. People still have a big problem paying for it a lot, you know, which is which is bad. It's a shame. But I think the more events we put on, the more people see case studies or, or learn how to do things better. Hopefully, that will change. With with Ollie and with uh, Pep um, and and Marie, these the people who are in conversion rate optimization companies. Um, they have the benefit of so much of their data actually coming from tests and experience of, of both collecting data and then running tests, but getting, doing it. Well, CRO, uh, or more appropriately, conversion optimization, the, the rate word in the middle there is a bit of a, I know Pep has a problem with that, <laughs> that word being in there. Uh, really, it's just making things better. It's optimizing your business, and I think that's where sometimes people are a little short-sighted and they, they try and optimize little things, but really, you have to optimize your business. It's making your communication better. It's making the experience for the user better. It's not just about uh, short-term conversions. Oh, this convert like crazy. But are you annoying someone at the same time? So maybe you get a certain type of customer, but your ideal customer is actually leaving. So you have to track your cohorts, that's why where it comes into analytics, and see if you're actually getting your ideal customer, and adjust how you try and optimize your business based on that. Doing analytics to get more, right? We're, we're, we're taking what happened in the past, we're taking the history of what we did, and we're using that as a plan, a, as good of a plan as we can get most of the time, in order to get more of it. We want more customers, we want more sales, we want more of all these different things. But I think that as analytics tools get more feature laden and more feature heavy, it, it, we lose focus. The obvious future of Sierra is machine learning. And it's really going to be interesting from, say, the tool provider's perspective, who gets there first. Some of the biggest challenges are that there's active competition developing that uh, it doesn't fit the vendor model typically, but is you know open source and other products that can be brought in house. Those kinds of solutions uh, allow for Google Analytics, for example, vendors in this industry uh, to be pushed aside. And uh, as privacy becomes a greater concern, as legislation becomes a bigger problem to the privacy, uh, we'll find that organizations are adopting in-house solutions even more. You're going to see more and more 
local actors like WebTrack in Germany or uh, AT Internet in France and so on uh, because maybe they can provide language specific data, maybe they can provide um, other stuff in the culture in which they exist. Um, so I've, I've seen a growing trend for these products even though they're local paid products. Uh, we have net miners in Denmark and, and, and I'm just I see we're going to, I'm betting we're going to see a lot more local initiatives. That's an evolution, you know, us personally, other brands, we have a data scientist who has his own algorithm uh, based on that, which is what we use, we don't, you know, we combine that with GA data um, to run our tests in a, in a completely different way, so, and we're beginning the process of working towards automated CRO, using the data that we're collecting, using his algorithms, um, we're analyzing pages to see what is predictive of conversion, what isn't, uh, what we can combine to make a predictive model. The digital analytics professional has a very important role in collecting data, understanding data, and making recommendations uh, for testing. But I think that the, the, the analyst um, may be looking more for Awesome. How do we make marketing decisions as well? Not like what are we going to test to change on the website, but now that I know this about my channels, how am I going to improve my campaigns? That would be something that a CRO professional wouldn't do. So the, the analytics professional is more in the in the data and isn't actually instrumenting a test and running test and looking for results as much. That's my sense. It, it, it's not a it's not a black and white. You could see a shift going to like, oh let's let's focus on conversions, let's focus on the business value type of stuff. And so it took a good 10 years to, to go from like, let's just worry about the new tactic that's out there and focus on the business. And I see analytics doing the same thing. We're not, you know, we're focusing on, like, I see more talks about strategy. I see more talks about running a team. I see more talks about the maturity of this type of, of industry. So maturing in, in, as we do with business, because you know, analytics, like web analytics right now is probably an adolescent. <laughs> it's probably like a 13 year old or a 15 year old just learning how to drive, like just learning how to get these things going. It's not quite even an adult yet. And so it's like, but as it gets to that point where we hit that adult range, we need to start making adult decisions. The enterprise analytics market is going to become much more competitive and uh, potentially uh, it's going to require adaptation within the reseller component. Um, as uh, things change with Google Analytics 360 and with other vendors, uh, we'll find that uh, providing that layer of support for the reseller uh, becomes a critical differentiator. And so uh, facilities like testing on data and, and before it actually reaches Google Analytics but during the implementation phase. Um, when you're actually writing the code to produce data in Google Analytics. That testing layer will become a differentiator when you need to accelerate um, a vendor or a reseller uh, toward a better product in this market, when it, in support and, and in terms of quality of product. Um, so uh, we'll get to a point where quality is the differentiation between vendors and between resellers. Management is an issue, we can solve that with fancy dashboards and lots of storytelling and we can give them pretty much one-to-one -one attention and that's all good but when it starts going the other way, when it starts going broader into the organization that maybe you have a hundred web editors, maybe you have a hundred contributors to your website and they all have to understand what's going on in their particular section of the website. You can't just give them access to, to Site Catalyst or Google Analytics, you have to you have to be able to provide them clear data about their little part of the world in a way they understand it, using words they understand. Business intelligence really covers the broader scheme of data within the organization from lots of different sources. And analytics is a function, not Google Analytics, but analytics as this concept, is a function on that data to derive insight from the data. And uh, Google Analytics itself, the product, and, and digital analytics as what we understand websites, mobile, and potentially the integration of other interactions inside that type of data set is really a marketing component and, um, and to some degree a product measurement component. So when you integrate that, it's actually a subset of BI altogether. And so it's important to understand that the value proposition to the whole enterprise Google Analytics is just part of that, or digital analytics is just part of that. 
but it's also an important function to understand what's outside the business. Well, it's, it's clear that, that in the next year we're going to see Google trying to enter the market as a paid paid service with 360. We're going to see them try to, to go up against uh, Adobe Marketing Cloud. Uh, so that's going to be interesting to see that battle fight out. And, and again, that's, that's going to be it's going to be a tool for the nerds, uh, and it's going to be fun and great to watch for us. It, a threat that I see right now is um, like the way that Google's taking their product to be a, a super premium Google Analytics product that's available to you know the the, the fortunate few who have, can make that investment. Um, I think there's a lot of consolidation and a lot of enterprise level focus on analytics, and so the threat is that if you're not an enterprise who's looking to make investments here, and you're not looking to grow, like we talked about earlier, if you're not looking to expand your competency and you're not looking to get outsized results through analytics and making better decisions that you have, then you're going to be risking being left behind even further. And so you're going to be stuck with a product that, you know, it's free or, or very inexpensive product that doesn't really give you the answers you're looking for. Integration with other platforms for business intelligence purposes uh, fundamentally becomes a value proposition and Google Analytics uh, really does a good job of integrating within its own platform but uh, sometimes struggles with the incorporation of other data sets, data types, etc. I mean I love Google Analytics more than anybody um, but I see that because of their dominant market share and because of the positioning they have a lot of these other smaller companies they're, they're afraid to to do anything because it's, it's hard to make money as a web analytics tool provider, as a vendor. There comes a point when Google Analytics is no longer uh, the single source of value. And uh, so the same would be said of other analytics platforms, they have to support this integration and flexibility. So uh, is, I think one of the biggest threats is that that demand is only increasing. And we have to keep up with that uh, from a product standpoint. When we only look at the world the way that Google looks at the world, then that can be a problem um, from a, just the insights we get because we're, we're sort of looking at it from a different type of perspective. It's really on customer traffic, search traffic, uh, remarketing, display advertising. Like That's the paradigm we look at our websites when really a uh, business owner, what they focus on is entirely on how much money did you make us? How, how did we make money? And so I think that's a threat is that we're getting closer, we're getting further along one way of looking at the world and we're not looking at the world as far as what's important for our organization. We're going to see that organizations really seek agility with their own data. Uh, they, they need to make it flexible and adaptable and they need to take an existing structure which has historically been very fixed in its form and they need to be able to transform it on the fly in some cases when, uh, when for example, their legacy data just doesn't look like their new data and they need to make it uh, reconcile. So I think, I think that's, uh, that capability is going to be coming in many different platforms uh, that have historically been so locked in, like uh, Google Analytics background is based in Urchin and in that regard it's very fixed. I think we'll start to see that become more flexible. So that we can uh, eventually start building a tool set that uses this technology to make some decisions on people's behalf because one of the biggest problems with CRO is people don't do it correctly, which again which is why conferences are important. Because um, people call tests too early, they, they test based on the wrong things. With some automated CRO, it will be making decisions for you based on the behavior of your visitors. So that is the next stage of CRO. One of the things it can do is calculate metrics on the fly and provide the data that you need so that you, when you get the data from a system, you don't then have to do as much calculation or manipulation of the data. You can get your data in histograms, you can get the, the metrics calculated. Um, that process of data output being accelerated, that accelerated data output will provide more capability to the analyst to do the, do the important work, which is analyze. I think there's going to be um, a greater degree of testing and validation that gets automated into uh, not just BI in general, because that's absolutely an important market for that type of functionality, but Google Analytics, uh, because of its legacy and because things are, are kind of fixed in the data model, uh, testing before it reaches analytics is going to become a more essential function. Um, it already is essential, but 
it's been manually operated for so long. And I think uh, this market, this, uh, the consulting market around Google Analytics uh, will uh, adapt into a more automated mode of that in the near term. And so I've seen it progress. I've seen it, I've seen it get more mature. I've seen people focusing more on like, how do we make this sustainable? What are the frameworks we can put in place? That type of stuff. But I think that it, there's obviously room to keep on going. And it's not so much that it's room to going to ideal. It's just like our lives, right? Like we grow, we grow all the time. Like a, a, to be a human is to grow. And so I sort of see our industry doing that. We're gonna try some things, some things aren't gonna work out, but ultimately we're gonna have to just continue to get better at what we're doing. And that's like a lifelong thing. Like the life cycle of, of analytics, we're very short in this process. I think that it's gonna go 50 to 100 more years. Analytics by humans is gonna be what's what it's going to be like the lifeblood of most organizations it's going to be um, one of the most important disciplines and everything we can do integrating these things to say this is really what's important to us it's we need to know clickstream data from the web but if we can't tie that to the outcomes from our actual sales system or if we can't tie that to our lead generation programs if we can't tie that together or if we can't figure out why a mobile visitor is the different is a different person than a website visitor to our site. If we can't get confident that we know who these people are and that we're tracking them, then we're going to be making worse decisions. The word big is a misnomer because small data has just as many treasures and just as much information buried in a small data as there is big data. Being in that segment, small to medium enterprise, you recognize that even my own thought process about big data, I'm like, oh, that's not me. But then when you look at it from a different perspective, you're like, oh, that is me. This is the most relaxed I've ever been at a conference. It's quite wonderful, you know, obviously being in beautiful Jamaica, come on. <laughs> it adds to that experience. Uh, what's really interesting, because uh, you have a lot of local attendees, is seeing the state of marketing here and analytics here. Where are they in, uh, on the curve of uh, modern processes and, uh, at, you know, Unbounce, we're, we're a global company with customers in almost every country in the world. So it's interesting for me to see how the Jamaicans do business, where, you know, you have to speak to your customers where they are. And what I've noticed is Twitter activity is quite low. So does that mean they live on a different channel? So you have to approach that. I know in South America, Facebook's a much bigger thing than Twitter for a lot of types of marketing. So that's fascinating for me to see how a local economy, a local culture, how they approach different Jamaica is a microcosm of the world. And they represent a country that's developing. And there is definitely a groundswell of persons clamoring for information. This particular conference, Super Week Jamaica, has allowed our local information technology industry to interface with the global space. And it was revealing not only for us as local professionals in IT, but it was also revealing to the international side to recognize that there is a vibrant market here. When you have synergies like that, it's always a plus plus, a win-win situation for us as persons working in information technology in Jamaica, as well as being able to interface with global partners. So despite us not having a formal organization, despite us not being in, in that organized, orchestrated community, I, I think we're a really weird digital analytics nerd. And, and we're very different people. I mean, some of us look like me, God help them. And some are very preppy and some are very relaxed. And it's but we're all sort of tied together. We smile when we see each other. It's, it's sort of a reunion thing every time. It's, it's, it's a good atmosphere. I don't think that's going away anytime soon. We're just the same as maybe Hungary, Israel, where the young, bright minds all aspire to the international stardom or the international people that are recognizable when you talk about technology. I mean, who doesn't want to be a Mark Zuckerberg? I'll be, even if it was in Jamaica, I'll be the Jamaican Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> if that's what the dreaming part of it. So yeah, Jamaica is 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 a little different in the fact that we've we've had the ability to step into the digital digital space without a lot of things holding us back. Some very progressive things happening. The guy before me, Arthur Fid, he was uh, 
really interesting. The infrastructure he set up for BI, and, and it's, it was funny, he has these different layers. The semantic layer was fascinating. I saw a lot of other people went, that's amazing. Um, but everyone else in the room was kind of like, their BI setup is down here, and it didn't have these layers. So that's, that's amazing to see that they're taking it that far. Uh, I just actually just enjoyed watching him. He's a very calm, calculated speaker, very engaging to watch. So. We're always clamoring to travel to Europe, to travel to the US. It's great when information can travel to Jamaica. And for that, we're very, very pleased. Super Week Jamaica, we drink coconut juice.